while valuation may not be an exact science. There are a variety of tools that can be used to try to at least approximate a mathematical value. And by combining several methods, it may be possible to eliminate some of the uncertainty and get at least within spitting distance of the right value. Each of these tools has strengths and weaknesses. But an effective investment banker understands and know when and how to apply each. We introduce here the first method to performing a valuation analysis which is comparable company analysis. COMPS, for short, is a valuation methodology that looks at trading valuation ratios of similar public companies and uses them to derive the value of another business. COMPS is a relative form of valuation, unlike a discounted cash flow DCF, analysis, which is an intrinsic form of valuation. Let's go through right now. A step-by-step -step approach to building your own COMPS table. This type of work will be routine for anyone working as an analyst in investment banking, equity research, corporate development, or private equity. Step 1. Screen and identify the right comparable companies. This is the first and probably the hardest or most subjective step in performing a ratio analysis of public companies. The very first thing an analyst should do is look up the company you are trying to value on CapIQ or Bloomberg so you can get a detailed description and industry classification of the business. You will run a screen based on criteria that include industry classification, geography, size, revenue, assets, employees, growth rate and margins and profitability. Step 2. Collect financial and market information. Once you've found the list of companies that you feel are most relevant to the company you're trying to value, it's time to gather their financial information. Once again, an analyst will probably be working with Bloomberg Terminal or Capital IQ to import financial information directly into Excel. If you do not have subscription to such services, you can simply just go through a company's annual and quarterly reports to extract the financials manually. The information you need will vary widely by industry and the company's stage in the business life cycle. For mature businesses, you will look at metrics like EBITDA and EPS. But for earlier stage companies you may look at revenue. You also need to gather market trading data such as share price, market cap and enterprise value to calculate the valuation ratios. Step 3. Calculate the valuation ratios. With a combination of historical financials and trading data in the comps table it's time to start calculating the various ratios that will be used to value the company in question. The main ratios included in a comparable company analysis are EV to revenue, EV to EBITDA, price to earnings and price to book. The ratios are basically calculated by dividing the respective market trading data with the financial data. Step 4. Use the comps valuation ratios to value the target co. Analysts will typically take the average or median of the comparable company's multiples and then apply them to the revenue. EBITDA, net income, or whatever metrics they included in the comps table. In order to come up with a meaningful average, they often remove or exclude outliers and continually massage the numbers until they seem relevant and realistic. For example, if the average P-E ratio of the group of comparable companies is 21 times, then the analyst will multiply the earnings of the company they are trying to value by 21 times to arrive at their equity value. The advantages of the COMPS method are that it is the most current of all the three valuation methods. It gives a market perspective as it is based on the most recent stock prices and financials of the company. COMPS are relatively easy to perform, and the data for them is usually relatively widely available, provided that the comparable companies are publicly traded. But we need to take note of the weaknesses of the method. The main weakness is the fact that it can be difficult to find a directly comparable company. And the method is not useful when there are few or no comparable companies. Comps analysis is also influenced by temporary market conditions or non-fundamental factors.